Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you a very impressive attacking game played by Bobby Fischer against Boris Spassky. This is the 11th game of their 1992 match. In this game Fischer had white pieces and he opened up with e4 to which Spassky answered with Sicilian defense. This came as a surprise because up to this point Spassky was choosing e5 move and then the players were entering the lines of Rui Lopez but this time he decided to make a change and Sicilian defense is on the board. Knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5. Rosolimo attack is on the board and this time it's Fischer who is delivering a surprise. The only time Fischer had played bishop b5 was against Matulovic in 1970. g6 was Spassky's answer with bishop takes c6. In some cases white can even refrain from going for immediate bishop takes c6 thus provoking a6 allowing his opponent to lose a tempo but in the game we see an immediate bishop takes c6 move b takes c6 as you know Magnus Carlsen loves to recapture with a d pawn but Spassky played b takes c6 here Fischer castled kingside bishop g7 rook e1 e5 black is immediately trying to seize the control over the center and I have to tell you that in here other popular alternatives are knight h6 or knight f6. In the game we see e5 to which Fischer answered with b4. Spassky said later that white's 7th move came as a stunning surprise. Yes, all the time we see surprising decisions by the players. By going for Sicilian, Spassky tried to surprise his opponent but it was Fischer who managed to take his opponent out of preparation twice first by going for bishop b5 and then we have b4. Interestingly this b4 move had already been played twice in 1992 but seems like that Fischer didn't know about those games and he made this move over the board. Even Fischer could not recall whether he had some analysis before or not. Uh, anyways, b4 is on the board and this is a, some sort of a wing gambit, you know. C takes b4 by Spassky. As said, the best way to refute a gambit is to accept it. a3, c5. Well, if you go for b takes a3 then after bishop takes a3, suddenly white is getting the control over this diagonal which can become somewhat unpleasant for black and that's why in the game we see c5 a takes b4 c takes b4 but at the same time the downside of this c5 followed by uh, c takes b4 is that uh, black is somewhat weakening his queen side d4 e takes d4 bishop b2 d6 knight takes d4 and queen d7 this is the crucial moment in the game and with this queen d7 move Spassky is getting a very unpleasant position. Later Spassky said that a queen b6 could have been better preparing bishop a6 if knight d2 then bishop uh, a6 but interestingly uh, Stockfish found a nice refutation. Now if you go for bishop a6 then white has a very beautiful answer. Can you find that winning move for white? Ready? Interestingly, even Yasser Seyravan missed this move in his book No Regrets Fischer Spassky 1992. In here, a staggering rook takes a6 move is winning on the spot. The idea is that now if queen takes b6, then this time white can play knight e6, both hitting on g7 and threatening knight c7 fork. Uh, interestingly, it may seem that by going for queen b6, uh, black is like stopping white from going for knight d2 but even in this case white is managing to get a very nice position. Let's take a quick look at this continuation and then we will proceed with our game. White can play rook f1 if queen takes d6 then queen f3 and now if we move like knight h6 then simply bishop takes h8 and white has a very strong attack if bishop h4 then bishop g7. Uh, actually instead of playing queen d7 in here the best move is knight f6. Uh, e5 is not dangerous black can simply play d takes e5 
if rook takes e5 check then bishop e6 and uh, by going for knight f6 black is preparing an immediate castling king side if knight c6 then queen d7 yes this line is of course preferable than the one which we see in our game in our game queen d7 was made and now let's see what's the problem with it uh, here comes knight d2 bishop b7 instead of thinking about castling as soon as possible Spalski is developing his queenside bishop but at this point even if knight d7 then already it's not that easy you know if you go for castling then you can lose an exchange although according to stockfish going for this line is better than playing bishop b7 uh, anyways already after queen d7 black is in trouble let's see what's happened next uh, knight h6 was spalski's answer but there is no time to castle and there comes a heavy blow by fisher knight f5 and now it's very difficult to find a good continuation for black uh, in here Spassky found the best continuation played bishop takes b2 and yes as you may have already guessed uh, there are no other good moves if a move like i don't know knight takes f5 then he takes f5 discover check and then f6 is coming if here the knight takes d6 with an irresistible attack the threat is rook e7 and yeah, black's position is totally lost. In our game after knight f5, we see bishop takes b2, and there comes knight takes d6 check, king f8, knight takes h6, offering the rook as well, and actually accepting this sacrifice is better than the uh, move which we see in our game. In our game, f6 was made by Spassky, and in here it's better to play bishop takes a1, this can somehow prolong black's resistance. Queen takes d6. Queen takes h8. King e7. Queen takes h7. Of course white has a huge advantage but uh, black can put some resistance. In our game f6 was played by Spassky and knight f7. Well Fisher is going for a simplification. And in this case actually Spassky is managing to... Uh, prolong his resistance rook a5 is the strongest move in here preparing e5 and if bishop e5 then rook takes e5 followed by rook e3 uh, but instead in our game we see knight df7 move by fisher he's offering the exchange of queens which was accepted king e7 knight takes h8 rook takes h8 and now there comes a very strong move knight f5 check yes we first saw knight jump on f5 and then the knight returns back uh, a very very nice tactical resource because uh, a move like knight g4 could allow black to solidify his position and in this case black has all the chances of drawing the game this bishop on c3 is just a monster that's why we see knight f5 check not even giving his opponent a single chance uh, g takes f5 was made by spassky he takes f5 discover check now if king f7 then simply rook d7 check in our game bishop e5 was made by spassky and we have f4 and now fisher will win this dark squared bishop Rook takes c2, e6, bishop c6 not allowing rook d7 and it's high time to offer the exchange of rooks, you know, uh, thus keeping the steady advantage. We see the exchange of rooks on c1, king d6, rook d1 check, king e5, e7, a5. In return, uh, black is trying to create a counterplay relying on his queenside pawns. Well, in here, if king takes f5, then simply rook d8. Uh, white is, of course, faster. You can't do much with your b-pawn. In the game, a5 was played and rook c1. A very accurate move. By going for rook d8, actually, in this case, once black has a pawn on a5, black can create some problems for white. This requires a huge calculation. That's why we see a solid continuation. Rook c1, bishop d7, rook c5 check. King d4, rook takes a5, b3, rook a7, bishop e8, rook b7, 
King c3, King f2, there it goes. Uh, now it's high time to centralize the king, bishop f7. Well, well if I move like king c2, then uh, king d4, uh, a similar line we will see in our game. And then king d5, king c2, king e6, white is of course faster. That's why in the game we see bishop f7, first black is taking under control the light squares. And at the same time, uh, Spassky is setting up a very cunning trap, you know. Uh, at this point, having an extra tempo is something which allows to win. For example, in here, if you play king e4, if you lose a precious time, then simply king c2, and this is a draw. That's why Fischer played g4, and yeah, after king c2, already you have a pawn on g4, the king steps on d4, and is near to the dark squares. Uh, b1 queen was made by Spassky. Rook takes b1, king takes b1, king c5, king c2, king d6. And at this point, uh, finally Spassky resigned. Let's take a look how white can win. It's very simple. You're just going for a pawn promotion and then you're winning the pawn on f6. There it goes. Or why not king takes f6? Let's capture the pawn and win the game. That's why on move 41 after king d6, finally Spassky capitulated. Well, this was a very nice attack by Fischer, uh, with which he demonstrated how one can target opponent's king stuck in the center. But on the other hand, even in that tough situation, Spassky managed to put a tough resistance and prolonged the game. All in all, Fischer played this game like a machine, and didn't give his opponent a single chance. Uh, in the end, a chess puzzle for you where the task is to find the winning line for white. It's white to move and I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Uh, feel free to check out my early uploads as well. I will see you in my next video. Take care.